Hello everyone from Chelsea Fan TV. My name is Alex. I'm also at Stamford Bridge with Charlie. Uh, we've just beat Brighton 1-0. It feels really weird to say that we've actually won a game. I mean, every time I sit with you, we lose. So maybe we should just fucking sit on the opposite side of the stadium every single time. Well, may maybe, mate, but mate, it's, it's a mad feeling. Like It feels like we've like won a fucking trophy or made a final, but we've just won in the third round. But I think that just goes to show how, how deprived we've been of, of any wins, of any success or any any celebratory moment so we've got we got to enjoy this one mate. we have to enjoy this one we're going to be shameless as fuck tonight so why, why not mate and also for the man united fans brighton at home is not for everyone is it so you know it's, we got we got to enjoy these moments mate i know it's only third round of the cup but mate blackburn in the next round mate maybe wembley here we come again who knows <laughs> i mean look it, i'm not i'm not saying it's it's realistic based on our premier league form but we are a team that are very much used to getting up there in the cups and i know a lot of those players aren't here at the moment but do you think that Chelsea mentality will still run through the new players even though they haven't been here for that long or is it a case of letting them settle in for a season or two before they really know what it takes to, to progress in competitions like this? I don't know but I think, I think we're, we're, we're ready to progress I think we can progress I think the cup may, might, might suit us a little bit better potentially um, so yeah look, I've always said you know we need to take the domestic cup seriously we haven't got much to play for this season so we've got two trophies that's it we're not winning the league and we've got no Europe so Carabao Cup represents a really good chance to win something and do you know what it's really important when you're a new manager a new group of players to win something as soon as possible just to give that belief and that winning mentality within the group that you know what we actually can go and fucking win something and people laugh at the Carabao Cup but the Carabao Cup's actually important to win you know we saw it when Mourinho first came all those years ago targeted the Carabao Cup went strong in each round we seem to be going strong in, in rounds so far so there's no reason for us not to keep doing that and look I'm not saying this is going to be some sort of turning point in the season but this is going to be a massive massive confidence boost going into our next two games. I don't think we can underestimate how important that's going to be. Do you think that we would be as serious about the Carabao Cup if we were able to win more games in the Premier League? Uh, yeah, I still think we would because Chelsea's about winning trophies, isn't it? Like you, 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 you don't take the piss in cup competitions. So for me, this is a club that's synonymous with success and you have to be taking the domestic cup seriously. So for me, we should be going strong in every round and we should be taking it very seriously because it's done by the end of February, early March. So there's no reason not to be going strong in every Every round we've got nothing else to play for as i was saying so yeah we have to take it seriously yeah if we were doing better in the league you'd feel better you'd obviously feel better and you might rotate a few more players but at the end of the day mate we need wins we need confidence and this is exactly what what we ordered tonight we needed it it wasn't pretty at times but we got the job done and that's what it's all about it's interesting as well because pretty much every game we've played this season the majority maybe we'll exclude the uh the Wimbledon game um, we've, we've said that Chelsea have played good football you know uh, maybe the Nottingham Forest game as well yeah. we've, we've played good football but we just haven't been able to get the end result but today you said it yourself it wasn't pretty but we got the job done is that a priority now and we have to put our playing style to one side and just say listen boys we've got to get some wins mate you just got to win ugly I've always been someone that's points over performances just win I don't care how we win yeah of course if you can have both it's great but we're not going to get both with a new team with so many new young players that gel just go on the pitch try and do your best and just get a win any way possible and we ground that out tonight but that that goal from Jackson was important for him as well I thought he had a, he had a half decent game second half he was better first half he wasn't great um, th these moments are, are important and this could be as, as I said a real boost um, but yeah look it wasn't the best oh, as I say look first half we were shocking mate we were dreadful um, and you're thinking this could be another long night you know we were playing like San I don't know what we were doing at the back mate we were fucking about of it Sanchez was horrendous in that first Oh, he's been good in the last few games, but he was horrendous in that first half. We've got to be fair. When we're going to be, when we're going to praise, we've got to criticise as well. You're correct. S Sanchez mate. was horrendous. Everything was going out. The short passing out from the back, it was all over the place. There were no options, mate. We were playing mannequin challenge football in that first half. No movement whatsoever. So, look, obviously, come out the second half, we were a lot better. Cole Palmer was fantastic. So, I remember when I said after the Villa game, all I want to see is Ben Chilwell play left back. I want to see Moises Caicedo playing at pivot. And I want to see Cole Palmer start as a number 10. We saw all those things tonight and we won a fucking game of football is, is that is that really a surprise you know I, I, look Cole Palmer's got to play more for me I thought it was great it was brilliant tonight Mudrick again had another good game good to see his confidence building starting his third game in a row so he's earning some trust in the manager now so look, there were positives so I also want to give a shout out to Kukurea as well because he's coming for a lot of stick from Chelsea fans a lot of stick from the media as well he was superb tonight particularly that second half when he at right back he played maybe a, a little bit more up for it because he was against his former club in Brighton but 
credit where it's due. He, he was brilliant tonight. And maybe this can be a kickstart for him potentially to, to get some more minutes. Maybe he's earned the trust from the manager or, 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 or whatever. But it was it was good from him tonight, man. And, I, and, I, and I'm pleased for him because you know it can't be it can't be easy when you've had a difficult start to your life at Chelsea. Fans have been on your back, and I'm delighted to see him do well. It's an interesting one as well, though. I mean, if if we are going to play him again, is it going to be in that right back spot again, or, or or do you think we should try and get him competing with players like Chilwell and, and Matson in that left back position? Well, it's interesting, mate, because we haven't got a right back for the next couple of games, have we? So, I mean, I I, I thought De Sassi would have played there, but he obviously didn't. He rested Silver and went De Sassi Colwell in the middle, and obviously he played he played right back today uh, for the second half anyway. It was really good. Maybe that maybe that could be an option going forwards. That could be an option. Like I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but it certainly gives you something to think about as 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 the gaffer. But I mean, another down point. Chilwell going off injured at the end. I don't know how serious it is, but he couldn't continue, and we had no more subs left. So it must have been serious enough for him not to be able to carry on for those last few minutes. So ho hopefully that's you know that's not too bad because another injury to him is is not what we need right now when we're just starting to get some players back in training and things like that. But look. Overall, for me, mate, it was it was a positive night in terms of the win. The performance wasn't great, but that will come. And it's it's confidence is so important in football, so important. And it, and this could this could really push us forward, mate. It, re it really could. I'm not saying we're going to suddenly go and win like five or six games on the spin, but it certainly puts me in a more confident mood heading into that Fulham game on Monday. But look, we were a little bit lucky today as well. If there was VAR, Ugo Chukwu probably would have been off. He was on a booking already. That was a straight red challenge in my mind. So we we got a little bit lucky there. But do you know what? After all the bad luck we've had this season so far. In injuries, um, missing all our fucking chances, not getting the rubber the green with certain refereeing decisions. You know, you make your own luck and we, we got away of one tonight, but you know, we, we deserve that. We deserve that. So I'm just hoping we can use this as a springboard and you know, it's, it's a massive lift for everyone associated with the club. Yeah, I mean, just, just one last thing. Um, obviously, there was a lot of pressure on Jackson because he hasn't scored as many goals as maybe people would have predicted based on his, his pre-season form. And we had the news come out today with uh, Osimhen from Napoli. Obviously, I think he's taking legal action against the club because of a TikTok post, which is absolutely obscene. I've never heard of anything like they it. Did, they did proper violate him, though. It was, it was, a, it was a piss take, mate. I, I, as your star man at one new Serie A last year for the first time in fuck knows how long, it, it, he was violent by him so I, I'm not surprised <laughs> I mean yeah it's a weird one but I mean that actually opens the door for a lot of clubs to potentially be able to sign him in January if he wants to leave um, but there's also Ivan Tony as well so I mean we've got two top class strikers that we could potentially try and get a hold of the question is do we need to do we trust Jackson yeah, no, we do need to because Jackson's fucking off to the African Cup of Nations in January so we're not going to have him so, so it's Victor Osman yeah and it's Osman but what I mean is mate, I, I'm, I, I've been banging the Ivan Tony drum for so long now but I think he's class yeah. I think he's a top, top striker. Uh, 20 goals last year in the Premier League. Only Kane and Haaland with more than him doing that in a Brentford side. So I do play good football, but with better players around him, he could do a lot more. And I, mean, I think he's a perfect fit for us. The perfect mould, the profile of forward. He's quick, good with his feet, uh, good in the air, set piece, left foot, right foot. Mate, he ticks all the boxes. There's literally, for me, I can't see a single downside to Ivan Tony coming to Chelsea. So that would be what I would be trying to do in January. But look, Jackson tonight was good. Um, he got his goal, which he, which he deserved. Um, he could have had another one where he pretty should have scored and they had one ruled out for offside as well so arguably he could have almost had a hat-trick tonight but look confidence building again but he's still raw hold up play needs work he needs work in the air um, so yeah look there's things that need improving he's rough around the edges but again that's got to be a confidence boost for him as well so I think the, the main takeaway from tonight for me mate is just the confidence this is going to give the group